I wanted to tell you guys or share with you what I've been researching as to how the Pacific Islands are populated because I'm showing you these pictures that will kind of take you back in time so that you can understand more about who the Polynesian people as they are called, the Hawaiian people, Fiji, uh, Tongo, these islands out here in the middle of the ocean, some of the last places on the planet to be populated by humans. How did they get here? And so I googled maps like basically saying a map of Hawaii and Africa or things that could connect this area of the Pacific with the African population. But the bottom line now, because there's no maps like that online and the way that history is written is to elude you. Um, basically what they will tell you is that the spread of people over here began like 3,000 years ago. People began to spill out of the island chains of Indonesia, Melanesia, and the Philippines and into the volcanic islands of the Pacific Ocean. So what they don't tell you is who was living in the Philippines and Melanesia. What? Look at, look at the name, Melanesia. Indonesia. Because we know India, the, her, the history of India, the Nakshampa people in this valley. So Indonesia, Melanesia, um, and the Philippines, they don't say who these people were. So they scattered out about 3,000 years ago to these islands. Um, and then later they mentioned that um, a few habitable, habitable Pacific islands were never found until Europeans entered the ocean. See how they just, they just talk about way later Europeans entered the ocean and some uninhabitable islands were discovered. What they don't say is if, the, if that happened later, then who was in the ocean before the Europeans entered the ocean? And that's the elusive, um, it's a way of giving history that avoids the truth. Like they'll talk about when the Europeans came out sailing around, but they won't talk about who were these people 3,000 years ago and riding around in these amazing boats, these amazing sailboats voyaging out into the middle of the ocean. Who were they? Because it's not until later that the Europeans popped out and started to discover stuff, which is so funny. How are you going to discover stuff like hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of years later? So the original history is never told. It's there because they have to include it because their timelines wouldn't make any sense. But what they do is they leave out who they're talking about. They'll mention the Europeans, but they won't say who these first exploring first people were and how they settled onto the islands. And so how over time, and also, you know, continental drift. So you have to look at which continents were connected before continental drift. And the reason why I want to share this is because we need our history and we need our, our collective consciousness. By thinking that we are not all connected, we fail to have a collective consciousness with all of our people because we've been taught that this is a separate piece of the puzzle. This is a step, a matter of fact, this is a whole different puzzle. And then your puzzle's over here, and then their puzzle's over there. We are being taught that we're not one because if you look at the oneness of the majority of us, it's a powerful, powerful slide. Plus, you're going to see the same culture, the same drumming, the same dance, the same outfitting, the same uh, uh, relationship with nature all over the place, all over the place. And they used to call it indigenous uh, societies. And they have these little words and stuff, anything to say what they need to say. So we have to start talking about it and go ahead and get the information. Runito Rushiki, I believe I'm saying his name right. I've seen him speak in Seattle like more than 15 years ago before he got, before Facebook came out and he got, out, got very popular on Facebook. So I was introduced to his work 
long time ago. I got a copy of one of his books, and it was basically like a chat book that was just stapled together where he talked about his journeys all over the world and finding African and melanated people every single place that he went. So it's a great book. We have his work out there, but we have to keep on redefining and updating the work with our own personal stories because things become un- irrelevant, not irrelevant, but unrelevant to ourselves and our children. If we don't add our story into it. So one thing I can say is when I was in Hawaii as a child, I remember um, getting as souvenirs these little Hawaiian dolls. They were dark, dark chocolate, red, brown, um, with a grass, green grass lace skirt and the black hair and the lay flower lay around the head. But the dolls were very dark skinned. And I remember having those. I wish I'd have kept them. Now the last time that I came to Hawaii I looked in the souvenir stores and those dolls don't exist anymore and the dolls that they do have they're light skinned. So even the pervasiveness of changing the color of population is kind of accelerating at this time so we need to raise up a little bit it's not a battle against those that are deceptive they they're not even important they're in another lane we stay in our lane and work and teach and educate and fulfill each other's needs to know who we are a lot of people say it and feel it's the ancestral call tell the truth seek the truth and then share As far as metaphysics go, um, that's us. So when I Google the yad yum position, or I Google tantric sex, or I Google kundalini, I should be seeing pictures of us. I should be seeing pictures of us in the yad yum position. Um, So we have to start creating those images and tagging them 